Uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to do the uh, YouTube Darwin Awards. Uh, I, had those, I had never heard of these before. You've never heard of the Darwin no, Awards? You, well, you told me, didn't you, recently? The Darwin Awards commemorate those who improve our gene pool by removing themselves from it. <laughs> this was a headline on Sky News. A YouTube prankster who cemented his head in a microwave says he should be fined. <laughs> Uh, for the firefighter rescue. Oh, that would have been a good day at work for them, will not yeah, it, to be fair? Like, that's they'd why... They'd probably love it. They'd probably filmed it. It's like medical people that work in, like, A&E, and, you know, the, the, somebody will come in and be like, oh, I slipped, and there's a broom handle up my ass. They, they didn't slip, did they? They didn't get stuck up your ass by slipping. I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. And welcome back to the Breaking Bread Podcast. I tell you, I'm full of beans today. Nothing can dampen my spirits. Not, um... <laughs> Arsenal conceding a... Two goal lead against Liverpool and drawing a game. Not people <laughs> whinging in the comments about a slight change in formula to the latest video. Not even a festival, I'm sure. I mean, I'm in a great mood today. How are you doing? Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I'm good, man. I thought you'd be happy. It's like I, I, this is not uh, like put on. You came in absolutely skipping through the door. You know, that's what eight hours of of almost in, uninterrupted sleep will do for me. Did you do it's it, amazing. You sleep in your own bed. As in, like, you're a single... Oh, no, I got, I got the fuck out of... Like, I, I got in, in bed with Linz and then uh, I uh, I abandoned that after, I think, about 25 minutes. <laughs> uh, but I was in bed by... Uh, we went to bed early. And, uh, hey, is it that time of the month again? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Beard gets his leg over. <laughs> Bank and, holiday, uh, whether we need it or not. <laughs> and uh, shut the fuck up. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I then got in the second bedroom and... Uh, I was, I think I must've been asleep by 11.30. Wow. And I did not wake up until 7.30-ish. Solid eight hours. This is what it feels like to be a well-rested human being. It feels good. How are you doing anyways, you big twonk? <laughs> All right, mate. Thanks, yeah. Bank holiday weekend. It's going to be very con confusing for those listening because uh, this isn't going to come out until about two weeks after. We messed up his upload it's schedule. Like it's like you're on my upload schedule. Yeah, I know, yeah. We, uh, we, we put a episode up in between so what's what has happened and everybody that's listening will now know this um adam put up the video of us doing the chicken wing challenge then we did a chicken wing special then the week after that we did an april fool special which about four about three weeks after april Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> i totally forgot about that one <laughs> was that, that was not even going up yeah yet. yeah no so then oh we did it then another one comes out and this one comes out so that reference to arsenal gone you know uh, what I mean? That this by this point, mate, you're gonna. No, be... but people still remember it. It's not like ah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're ahead of time. I didn't predict the future. They predictably also conceded two goals. But as, as the people time. listen to this, you're probably gonna be in uh, in Canada. So you're going to Canada, right? Instead of Dubai. <laughs> yeah, Canada. It wasn't like a binary choice between Canada and Dubai, but uh, Canada. Eh? Yeah, yeah. But I'm going to uh, Calgary ish, somewhere around there this time. I've been like three times before and every time I've been to the East Coast, pretty much, Ontario, Toronto, yeah, yeah. all that. I mean, like Ontario is fucking huge, so that's not really, it's not really coastal, but um, yeah, I'm going for uh, further across Alberta, I think, is where, is the state, oh. they call it state or the province um, this time uh, to film some videos, yeah, just because, you know, it's technically North America, but I don't have to go through US border control and get a grilling from Steve, the enthusiastic uh, immigration Officer. Why are you back here again, son? You what were here, you were here four here, weeks ago. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, see what we got here is a pattern, sir. You could live here. <laughs> yeah, in 12 different states. Yeah, how rich do you think? I'm not Mr. Beast. You know, I've got fucking houses in every state. <laughs> I live in a dump, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <that> was, <laughs> ah, the real beard just came out there, didn't it? That eight hours sleep just wore off. <laughs> I live in a dump, mate. Well, before he starts to go into his little hole again, shall we start how we start every week with a YouTube comment? It's time for a YouTube comment from you. So I've picked out three from the video right, from last George, night. Right, George, so you've been gigging. What's, what's going on? I lost my voice this weekend. Did you? Yeah, you yeah. found it again this totally. morning. It's come back just enough this just, morning. Just in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so three from that video and then three from the podcast we put out on Sunday. Ah. From which video? Your video. Oh, the chicken wing video. The chicken wing yeah, the one challenge. that came out three weeks ago. Can we just do a couple of quick FAQs here, right? Okay, first of all, <laughs> the video wasn't... I don't, Disco Studio doesn't advertise, right? It's my, I'm going to get a t-shirt with that on there. It's not a sponsored video. I'm not affiliated with BrewDog, and I want to. I should have made that clear, actually, because they, they, had, they, weren't, it, they had a bit of heat, right, for treating their employees yeah. badly. I don't know. Just loads of people asked me to go and try and beat the wing record, right? That's, that's it. That's the extent of my involvement. I fucking paid out of my ass to have that video made. It's not sponsored by anyone uh what was another faq yeah it's not a permanent change 
so if you didn't like it, that's okay, right? A lot of people express they didn't like it. That's nice feedback, but uh, you know, don't wet your pants. The, the, what do you mean? It's not a permanent thing. I thought not, like I, I thought I was like co-owner of Beard Meets Beard Meets Food Beard Meets Incorporated. Food. No, I'm not gonna pay fucking five grand. For, for Honestly, a, a four-man crew, th- since, four, five, six times a month, no. Since I joined you on your channel that one time, like my uh, Instagram following has gone up by 100,000. My YouTube channel, I've not posted on uh, <laughs> <laughs> for about four months. That's, I, I think I've got a gold, I've got a silver plaque coming. Um, oh, no, because we, we need to keep that. Can we let, sorry to interject. Do you like <laughs> and, do the and, comments? Sorry, and the podcast, um, we've now got 250,000 subscribers on the podcast. That's the, the, the actually, level of influence. Do, do we actually have any more? <laughs> <laughs> zero transfer. Zero transfer. Right, come on, George. The diehard beard fans only like beard, not breaking bread. Anyway, George, YouTube comments. So, first one is from that video over the weekend on Beard Channel. Uh, <laughs> Smackies Funkies says, I think a video in this kind of style would be cool once in a while. An occasional series with Josh would be cool. I enjoyed it. Nice. Smackies Funkies got, he got the vibe right. A little experimental thing that's a little different. Does nobody any harm? Thanks, mate. Although, no, I'm not doing a series with Josh. Do you see him eat? I can't come like... I thought I'd do all right. Yeah. Uh, actually, the comments did say you did pretty well. Yeah. That's because yeah. there were no close-ups on his wings, yeah. that's why. They did say that you slowed Adam down, though. I did slow him down, yeah. Yeah, yep. you were the pace car. I'm the devil. I've seen you do it with your sister. Like you took a big fish and chips. <laughs> 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 what? You did it. big fish and chips challenge and shit about four chips and True. the yeah, end she, of a, she, she, a fish. <laughs> what are you going to say then? Yeah, no, she's, yeah, she's pretty... She, you're both equally bad. <laughs> Next comment from Average Person. This was easily one of the funniest videos on this channel. We'd like to see more of this type every so often. Ah, thanks, mate. That, that, are you, did you specifically just pick out the good ones to put me in a good Picked mood? Picked out some good ones, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> there's ah. been quite a few negative ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but those are more entertaining. Oh, what's that average dude? Average man? Average, average person. person. Average person. Thank you very much. That really does mean a lot to me. And last comment from that video, uh, stupid heathen nine seven eight. Got to tell you, I love all of your videos. I definitely like the personal feel behind most of your videos. But after seeing this, I got to tell you, you got a place on TV. This was incredibly entertaining. You got a place on TV, beard. Thanks, mate. No, I hate TV, but um, I thought that does mean a lot. Did you? So you picked you, the three that you picked were all good ones. There was like a plethora of bad ones and you didn't pick any of those. <laughs> my we'll, favorite, we'll maybe do a Patreon exclusive segment going through all that, maybe. I was going to say my favourite one was the one called Josh a Clout Chaser. Did you see that one? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's this guy, I don't, it, it was, it came across as really quite, um, what's the word? Uh, he, he was, he seemed to be genuinely concerned. He's like, Beard, I don't like the look of this Josh guy. <laughs> he seems like your classic clout chase, you know. I looked at his Instagram profile and ages ago. It was, you know, the usual stuff. And then now it's 60% you. Just be careful. And I'm like, I think if, if Josh was clout, ch- chasing clout, he'd be at, with his really famous mates, right, that he filmed the videos for. <laughs> yeah. Not me. Believe me. Yeah, my, my uh, Instagram is mostly Paul Smith at the minute and some fighting stuff. Paul Smith, Ant Middleton, yeah. UFC it's fighters like and shit. Your people. Yeah. But... We've come, we've come a long way, haven't we, mate? Chasing yeah, people the old realize clout. That we're actually buds, right? We sp- I mean, if he's chasing clout, this, if nothing else, this podcast should have told him that's not going to work. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no clout has been chased or achieved. Go on. I picked out a couple of comments as well from the podcast we put out. Um, from Don't Rump 901. I had to pause here after about nine minutes to watch the chicken wings video and I'm extremely glad I did. Almost cried laughing at the part in round six where Adam thought he could taste eggs and Josh fumbled over his words about eating breakfast. Yeah, and then you said, oh no, that sounds like I'm implying that I ate your ass. <laughs> Which actually I left in the video. The cut. That was the uh, one amend that I was going to give to George and say, I don't know if we can leave that, but it was quite funny, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took away that PG uh, element to your channel for a second. Um, we got one from Gene Longsden. Josh held Adam back on the challenge, to be honest. Adam would have easily eaten another 20 wings in that time limit if he ate them at his own rate, all because Josh was struggling to beat a woman's personal record. <laughs> that then, sounds a bit sexist. And then someone from the uh, Breaking Bread podcast has com- uh, replied to that comment saying, don't let the door hit you on the way out, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first time I've ever commented from the podcast account. <laughs> yeah, that's not me. Yeah, if fuck I, you, Gene. If anyone sees, sees Breaking Bread podcast, that was, that's not my activity, right? That's one of these fellas. <laughs> or maybe Mike going rogue and logging yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's still logged into it, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and then one last comment from Roger Fleury. 
Ninth, good afternoon, Adam and Josh. I loved your two Brits trying to be and <laughs> eating chicken wings challenge. You were both funny. And you had, and you two did a great job on the challenge. Josh impressed me with his effort and Adam could have eaten a hundred wings if he didn't talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun watch. Roger and Pierre, South Dakota. Well, yeah, we finally impressed Roger. Roger. Cheers, Rog. He's the guy that normally says that we're not funny. Yeah, big R dog. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, I, that sh I should take you with me more often though, because if that means that people think I could have done way more and I don't actually have to do the eating, it's like a nice, a nice uh, steady, steady day at work, won't it? Can yeah. we give her a, a, a honourable mention to the lady that showed us her arsehole on Twitter? <laughs> Come on, it happened, it happened, lads. I, well, I didn't see it. Like, I, I, you say it happened, right? I'm not even in, I'm glad that I'm not in the conversation. <laughs> you are in the conversation, yeah, you're tagged in it. I, I literally don't see it. Like, it's, I couldn't I believe it when it popped up. I was like, what's this? It, it was a... <laughs> Can we, can we do we, I don't think we have to show it, right? Do we can't show it. We can't, <laughs> we can't show it. Well, I thought you, I used to just mention. Well, it was, yeah. It was, I think somebody had replied, right, on, uh, on you had shared the video, I think, on Twitter, and somebody replied to you and me. Yeah, no, you tagged, us on, you tagged us on your Twitter, you know, you put out the post saying your, your new videos out, and then somebody had then commented. Yeah. But, but an explicit I did, but I, It's weird, because I didn't see it, so I must have, like, my settings on, like, a... Uh, child control setting or something um, but yeah did, what did it say something like how do you fancy a night with me or something I can't remember one second and the person that suggestively semi spread their butt cheeks I don't I don't know why uh, you and me now what do you think <laughs> look <laughs> that's what's, so funny like, what's wrong with look it says that? at beard meets food at Josh Goodgen at breaking bread pod it's best I think I didn't see because I would have replied and said no, thanks. I've already eaten. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in the chat saying all you can eat, lads. <laughs> anyway. Of course, course you did. Of course you did. <laughs> Moving on. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. I'm sure that's an avid listener. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a bot. It's a bot account. So. <laughs> it's a bot account. Um, <laughs> finger papping each other's assholes. What film's that from? I don't know, mate. Jackass 7. <laughs> Come on. No, I don't know. It's from... Uh, <laughs> you don't even know, know. You. The one with Channing Tatum and, and uh, what's his face when they go back to... Jump 21 Street. Jump Street. Yeah. Or 22 Jump Street. 21 Jump Street. <laughs> right, so today we've got a, uh, a pretty special uh, podcast planned. Um, I, I, I put this little this picture in the chat, we'll put it on screen, and for those listening, uh, it was a, an article by Daily Loud and it read... Uh, YouTuber who visits most dangerous places on earth has been captured by the Taliban. <laughs> so, and there's a picture of him really sad being captured by. And like, I personally, like, just in case you didn't know, we're not nice people. And I found that hilarious that the YouTuber chasing actual clout I mean, I'd, got I'd, captured I'd, by the Taliban. I'd, which I'd, I don't find his, his circumstance funny. I'm uh, sure he'll be all right. But I, I think there's, there's, there is a certain degree of uh, poetry in, in the fact that. China, he, he probably felt there were no consequences and so he, he has now felt the full force of those consequences. I'm sure he'll be all right. Uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to do the uh, YouTuber Darwin Awards. Uh, I, had those, I had never heard of these before. You've never heard of the Darwin no, Awards? You, well, you told me, didn't you, recently? So uh, named in honour of Charles Darwin, the father of evolution, the Darwin Awards commemorate those who improve our gene pool by removing <laughs> themselves from it. The idea of natural selection, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I thought it'd be good to... Uh, you know, we'll do a, like we're going to try to do a podcast about this. Uh, so I put it out to the audience. I said, if you know any, send some links in to some articles, and we'll uh, we'll have a listen. Speaking uh, of uh, sorry to interject, speaking of Charles Darwin, um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, I tell you, I got uh, quite a lot of people got mad that I uh, I shared on my Instagram story. Uh, I photoshopped my head onto that of Jesus Christ uh, being you know, uh, coming out of his tomb. I did see um, it. You tagged me in it. I, re I reshared it. I, it was really like, I, it wasn't supposed to be blasphemous or anything. It's just because a lot of people say I look like Jesus, right? Because I have a beard and long hair. Um, and he, he had his hand open. One of the images I found was him coming out of his tomb. It was Easter Sunday, right? So it wasn't, uh, and in his hand, I put new episode, right? <laughs> and a lot of people were just like, oh God, this is so offensive. I'm like, I think it's really offensive. I can't remember, imagine GAC being sat up there thinking, you know what? That guy's a real bastard for using a picture of me on on to advertise this this video. But uh, yeah, I had to delete quite. A, there was like a, I think like twelve people. I didn't realize. We, I thought it was still a pretty secular country, but a lot of people got mad about it. Sliding your DMs, calling you a prick. Yeah, I thought like your hardline Christians maybe would be um, would just not be subscribed to me because they'd be thinking that's not allowed. You know. Yeah, I mean like you're breaking all the rules. You work every Sunday. Your videos come out every Sunday. That's like against the. 
I think you're confusing there Christianity with Judaism, Josh. What? Yeah, why, why would I not be at a... Uh... I went to Catholic school. I'm pretty sure Sunday was always like a day of rest. You go to church and just chill. Yeah, but you know, you're not like prohibited <laughs> from... It's not, it's, not a, it's not a Sabbath, <laughs> is it? Separately, you don't chill at church. <laughs> I don't go to church anymore. I don't practice it. <laughs> yeah, but you don't, you, no, you're not prohibited from doing things, are you? You're thinking of the Sabbath, aren't you? I don't know, man. Anyway, so I don't know why I came out to tell you that. I just thought it was quite funny that... I thought it was a, a pretty good Photoshop, you know? I, I thought it was solid, mate. I thought you looked looked fresh. I looked like... Well, I looked like... It, so it, it fit. Anyway, go, what were you going to say? Sorry. <laughs> this is what I went. Todd, just cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy that said it in now? Steve, cut that. <laughs> Steve, Steve. <laughs> I found this one on the old... Uh, on the old <laughs> Instagram. So they, again, they're not... This, this was... I don't yeah. think it was intentional, but she chose to <laughs> film it anyway. <laughs> so they're in like the crawl space of a house, right? Yeah. And uh, there's something in there, if I yeah, recall. So, so they're looking at opening up like the, I guess like a void space under a house. I think it's in California. And then it starts knocking. Oh my God, it's and it's a brown bear. So like at that point, you get the fuck out of there, right? But she chooses, she's still laughing though. She's I mean, still laughing. So this, it cuts to CCTV now, watch this. She's just chilling outside. She's like, oh, I'll be all right. <laughs> I mean, look at the size of that bear. I think Lads. if it came down to it, I'm not saying I would win in a fight, but I think I would still be running away. Don't get me wrong. Like I run away from pigeons sometimes, like if they're aggressive pigeons. But um, I think like if it came down to it, battle to the death. Would you reckon? Absolutely zero chance that you no, will. just kick it in the head about like <laughs> kick it in the head. <laughs> when you see that that um, the revenant, it's, but it's that's, no, that's like that's like massive that's bear. a massive grizzly bear. That's a tiny little brown bear. Probably that looks about the same size as Lindsay, right? And I'm pretty <laughs> much, like I could take her in a fight. I think no, like no. Do you imagine how strong that'll be. Mm. It's a tiny bear, man. It was in the crawl space of a house, right? That's like. Um, Lad, I bet, I bet that weighs way more than you, that. No, come on. It's, it's, no, I don't. I think it's, that weighs less than me. I've got no doubt there'll be some animal experts in the comments. Can you just um, tell me if uh, if Adam could beat an infant bear? It's, it's a small bit. Like, look at the video. Assess how big the bear is, right? Then you, from there, you could tell me, like, how strong it's going to be. I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm wrong. I'm just thinking I would, <laughs> I would be running away, but I, I don't think I'd be in fear of my life. <laughs> You're mad, it's hard to say that though without being there. I don't know. Uh, so next one I found. Let me just double check. It's the right one. What's up, guys? Right, this guy. Everyone. And this is the series. I'm going to take a bite. Right, scale of pain on one to ten. This right here is a green iguana. Let's see if he'll. It's, it's going to let an iguana there. bite him. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, great job there. Much better than I thought. Look at the chunks of flesh hanging off him. What's up, guys? My name is Dave Irwin, and this is right. I've got some questions. I, the scale of pain. I think he said he was called Dave Irwin. Did you just say, I'm Dave Irwin? <laughs> it's like, it's like Steve, Steve Irwin's long lost <laughs> idiot actual, son in America. It might be his actual son. That's not his son, man. Nah. It's not? Nah. He, his son wouldn't... Yeah, no. Nah. My first question is, why is he out of breath before the video starts, right? What's he been doing with the iguana? <laughs> up until this point. <laughs> Second question is, if you're going to let it bite you, why would you let it bite in such a, a vital place, right? Because if it's a, a, attacking your forearm, that's very close to the wrist. I feel like if you're going to let it bite you, let it bite on the upper arm, maybe. Or the elbow, or I don't know, your foot, or your butt. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, George. Um, <laughs> That's like the sort of like fattiest party, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's true that. Um, yeah, not new, George. Um, I the yeah, why, why though? I mean, I don't like it's it's, it's short as well. So like, the poor guy. Even if it got loads of views, he's not going to earn any money from it. But like, his whole um, Instagram seems to be dedicated to letting animals. So he's got two hundred seventy thousand followers. As uh, Dave Irwin, I'm pretty sure that's not what it's called. Oh, Dave Orin, David Orin, David Orin. Yeah, and uh, like, oh, this was a bad one. Look at this. Which I take snake bites and rank them on a scale of one to ten. This right here is the Gulf salt marsh snake. Try right in the finger here. He's gonna take snake bites and then rate them out of. These guys just have really weak jaws. Can barely even feel it. I mean, he's working and he's latching on. Like, this surely this isn't fair on animals to just let them bite you. Like what? <laughs> like what? Jeez. Um, I, yeah, I just don't really understand. I, I get it because it, it certainly appeals to the uh, scrambled egg-brained youth of today. If you watch somebody getting bitten by animals. Um, but I think the, 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 the thing with that is 
that there's there's a there are diminishing returns, right? At some point, people are going to want to see him get bitten by a lion. Right? And I mean, <laughs> where, where, where do you draw the line? <laughs> you know, chasing down those views, like people are going to be like, look, I've had enough of the uh, of the snakes and the bugs and the the you know the lizards get bitten on the leg by like a Bengal tiger or something. That's what I'll get bit, jump in the sea and get bitten by a shark, right? And where, where's he going? Is he going to know to draw the line? You never know these people. Do you remember the good old days of uh, of lockdown when the greatest documentary series of all time got released? Do you know what I mean? No. Oh, wait, uh, was it um, one of Louis Theroux's? Tiger King. Oh, I never watched it. <laughs> Did you see it, George? Yeah, I saw it. So the best part of that series... Rest in peace, the lady's arm. But one of the la- that lady got her arm ripped off <laughs> in the third, by a tiger. Ripped off? Yeah. Did she survive? Yeah, she survived. But like it shows you like afterwards, she, uh, her hand must have got caught in the cage or something and it got pulled in by a tiger and ripped off. She a visitor or she worked there? She or? worked there. Oh, well, then that kind of comes with the territory, doesn't it? <laughs> Normally, you would say tigers are on the whole pretty armless. <laughs> Because she's armless. Um, <laughs> no, you shouldn't joke about bodily injury, should you? But uh, shit happens, I guess. Yeah. Not meant to keep tigers in cages, are you? Fuck around and find out that. And then yeah, they found out. Joe Exotic got bit as well. Um, Speaking of uh, TV shows I didn't watch, I feel like I should draw attention to the fact that I'm wearing a uh, shirt that says Hellfire Club, right? And I just bought it because I like the look of the, de- the cartoon demons on it. But Lynn's told me this morning, Mrs. Beard told me this morning, that uh, apparently it's something to do with Stranger Things. So I don't want anyone to think I'm a Stranger Things fan. I mean, I realise it's a popular show, but just... I'm, is it? I'm not into it. So don't, like, I'm, don't, I, it's just coincidence that this is a Stranger Things. Uh, have you apparently. not watched Stranger Things? Never seen it. I read really. it, me. I thought it was really good. I don't have time for TV. I know like you've got lots of downtime. Now you've got your staff of editors, but like I, I don't really <laughs> have much downtime. So um, <laughs> yeah. I, I do know that it's responsible, though, for uh, a big resurgence in uh, Kate Bush's popularity. It, it was, yeah. And I can get behind that, you know. You want to hurt me? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know where I started then. <laughs> well, I think Kate Bush is like super underrated, so it's good that the kids of today are aware of what she uh, what she does. <laughs> what? What? You? You want to? All right, run the next video of somebody getting just no videos. I'm just having a conversation. Oh, right, I'm okay. just laughing at you. You're a strange human. Anyway, uh, so the next uh, this was a headline on Sky News. Uh, YouTube prankster who cemented his head in a microwave says he should be fined uh, for the firefighter rescue. Uh, the 22-year-old says he's traumatised, uh, but YouTube viewers urge him to apologise and refund West Midlands Fire Service. So there's a nice photograph of uh, the back of a microwave and I guess the, in, the gubbins inside. So he, But the headline implies that he said he should be fined. So he thinks he should be fined? Himself? If so, it means that at least he learned his lesson and he feels some remorse for it. Oh yeah, I guess he is. I guess he is the ones that saying it because it cost the fire service 650 quid to free him. How did he cement his, like, where was, where was his head and where was the cement? I mean, like, if he could still breathe, presumably. So after 90 minutes of his friends trying to uh, free him, they had to call an ambulance crew uh, <laughs> in Wolverhampton to get his uh, head out. Paramedics were unable to help, so the West Midlands Fire Service were co- called, uh, resulting in a rescue <laughs> operation that tied up five firefighters for almost an hour at the cost of 600. I believe that that's, uh, this must be an old article, it must cost way more than that. To be fair though, I mean, like, a lot of t- how many I always think now if there are any firefighters listening or watching this part right don't be offended but I always think like how many fires actually occur on a daily basis there's the old joke right um, like the one from the Departed at the beginning where they said that they spend most of their time saving cats up trees <laughs> which I know is a stereotype I know it's not true but I mean I suppose that comes under the remit it's his fault because he's he shouldn't have done it right but I mean it's part of Oh, that would have been a good day at work for them, wouldn't yeah, it, to they be would, fair? Like, that's they like, probably loved it. They probably filmed it. It's like medical people that work in like A&E and, you know, the, the, somebody will come in and be like, oh, I slipped and there's a broom handle up my ass. When they, they didn't slip, did they? They didn't get stuck up your ass by slipping. No, well, yeah, no. I, I once watched a thing on TV. And I think it was on Channel 5. I think it was called like 100 Weird Things Found Inside the Human Body and like 80% of that show was things in people's arseholes. Go on, give us, give us a list. There was like, there were right, a we're changing this podcast. Gonna, like, this podcast is, <laughs> this is now going to be podcast. like, yeah, the, the top 100 things found in people's <laughs> assholes. We started out like quite, quite interestingly um, with things like, you know, um, like parasites that people got, something had laid an egg in their ear and that kind of thing. And, but then the back end of the show, probably at, after the watershed, um, you know, 9 p.m. watershed <laughs> occurred, it was mostly, and somebody had like, uh, 
Somebody had poured concrete uh, in similar to that. They poured concrete into their ass, um, which naturally became very painful for them. And I think it was life threatening naturally because it started to set up their ass. Um, I don't know why they did it, but uh, they thought it'd be fun. I think maybe they were trying to get a cast of the, the inside of their rectum, um, <laughs> but they used concrete rather than, say, something that's not going to solidify and just destroy your entire <laughs> lower body. Um, so that was one of them. I can't remember what else was in there. Some weird... Like somebody had uh, got like a, a leg... They, they've got like a Lego... Some kind of... A reasonably that small that Lego. It was some like reasonably <laughs> small Lego figure, right? But it's tra- the interesting part about it was that it transpired. It had been up there for like... I don't know, six weeks or something. <laughs> yeah, like they, they, they'd start to feel sore and they'd been putting Lego in their butt, but they'd not counted the pieces of Lego and they'd left one Lego man, one man behind in the, uh, in the anal cavity. And uh, yeah, it caused some kind of fistula or something terrible. <laughs> but uh, I, I just think like, why, why I, I'm fortunately, I, I, I don't like the idea of anything in my butt. So, um, and I, you watch I, that, but you won't watch Jackass. That seems strange. Well, no, I, I, I I don't think I actively watched this. It was just on TV. And I'm pretty you know, sure in the I'll first, I'm pretty sure in the first Jackass, Ryan Dunn uh, put a Hot Wheels car in a condom, shoved it up his ass. Oh, and it might have been Bam Margera, and then went and got an X-ray. Look how he knows all the characters. Yeah, man. and then you could then they did an X-ray, and you could see the car up his ass. So I try to find a picture. No, that's that sounds like elite. No, I think you might see it. Let, let me let me see if. Let me I, see but, no, I, be- I totally believe you. I mean, I saw similar things on the show <laughs> that I watched. It's just I didn't get you know excited about it. I'm pretty mm. sure on you know the Lego thing. Yeah. You know, have, have you watched In Between Us? Yeah, yeah. Neil from In Between Us does say on that like he stuffs Lego up his bum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Between Us was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Look, it was Ryan Dunn there. Look, there's a little uh, Hot Wheels car up his. So that doesn't look so little. That's like the size of his. his I mean, half the size of his hip uh, bowl. That's a la- that's a large car, man. Like, why? And he did that for. I think it's a Nissan Figueroa. Figaro. Figaro. <laughs> you could probably fit a real one of those up your ass. So that's small. <laughs> anyway, are we, going, are we going somewhere with this podcast, though? <laughs> no, nah, I think it's just going to be a mess of a podcast, but uh, I'm sure people will uh, tolerate it nonetheless. It's all right. Nobody came over from the from the when we mentioned it. Anyway, we, we were worried, right? We are on our best behavior on the last podcast. <laughs> it's all right. Nobody came over. Uh, the next bo- next headline, uh, so it's starting to get a bit more morbid now. YouTuber shot at mall after prank goes wrong. Uh, in a shocking turn of events, a YouTube prankster gets shot in a crowded mall after a prank video he was filming went terribly wrong. That's the genre that needs to die, isn't it? I mean, you could say the same about like the whole eating niche, but like pranks. You know, I mean, like, I don't really know what to say about it. You got to, do you survive? Because so uh, I don't want to laugh if he died. I mean, that's, that's terrible. I mean, I'd, it certainly wouldn't wish death upon someone. I think he's all right. I think he's got a whopping 40,000 subscribers. He was playing a practical joke on a man in a, a mall uh, with a friend recording him. A bit like your mate tapping him on the shoulder. In one of the southern states and the, the guy was open carrying. Pulled yeah, he pulled him. out a gun <laughs> and shot Cook him. in the stomach, leaving him in critical condition. Just what was the, what was the nature of the prank? Though? We really need to know what that is. Because like, is I think that feels like un, an undue response level to shoot somebody who doing something with google translate the guy didn't like it so the suspect alan collie uh, was arrested soon after the incident and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon there really needs to be some like it that's not a, an unbiased account is it that's the universe telling you something mate i feel, I feel like you listen it's it's not it's, that's not a if somebody's in your face what they're pointing why, why do you have google translate off if he's in the, if he was in his own country i don't know but anyway, if somebody's pointing a, uh, a phone in your face, you just tell them to stop it. If they don't stop it, you just walk off, don't you? You don't pull out your, uh, your, your Magnum 44 or whatever <laughs> and blast a few holes in their stomach. Especially the stomach. That's like a really bad way to go out, right? If you, stop, if you bleed to death from your stomach. Yeah, it's going to cause some, uh, some problems. Like if you get shot. Shoot them in the leg or something at least. <laughs> <laughs> it, but I mean, that's maybe in a way that maybe, maybe that guy was... Um, not quite, what's the word? Um, maybe he was of general criminal intent, the guy that shot him. And in uh, doing the prank, he's exposed that and put the guy in prison. So maybe he's done a good thing. You know, because I feel like if you could shoot somebody. This guy backing up the YouTubers, man. I, I'm just, I mean, I, I feel like. Fight the power. I feel like we, what we should really bring a question here, mostly because we've not got anything else to talk about, <laughs> is, is the, the ethics at play when it comes to chasing your views down, um, at the expense of uh, of other people and, and the, the the heat that could get you into. What do you think about that, Josh? Well, who was it who said we were chasing clout? Did I mean, was that not that wasn't a comment, was it? That was a comment, but you'd not you don't know who, who it was I don't, from. I don't know who said it, but but it, like that, a, I think we, like we spoke about this off camera. I think the the whole 
it's, it's, it's sort of like infectious is this this world on YouTube now of like trying to chase views to try and get the most outrageous titles and thumbnails of videos to try and draw people in, which leads people to go down this path of getting captured by the Taliban. And yeah. uh, it could probably only... Could you imagine in your head, like you're going to think, right, I'm going to pull this off. I'll go to whatever country and Afghanistan most likely and I'll make a YouTube video, a wicked title. I'll just survive it and I'll get home. <laughs> With a slight thinking, I might get I might get in a bit of trouble. Probably not going to think I'm going to get captured by the Taliban. How much would you shit your pants at that point? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I'm like, shit my pants anyway. So <laughs> if, any, if anything, it's going to be more uh, readily the case if it's me being captured by the Taliban. Um, but uh, I feel like maybe I might get points for the beard. Maybe they'll let me go because of the beard thing. No? <laughs> anyway, I just wouldn't do it in the first place. I think it's a false economy, isn't it? That I th- This is a very real lesson that I'm going to, I'm going to dole out to you, right? If you're interested in making YouTube videos, there's, I think there's real value. If you say compare channels that do stuff like this, not the same thing, right? If you want to pull some lighthearted pranks on people, like you ever seen that famous one where there's a bodybuilder getting showered at the gym, well, gym uh, not a gym, oh, sorry, outside the gym, beach, the beach, yeah, 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 yeah. beach showers and something kind of keeps go, uh, leaning over the top <laughs> and squirting extra um, shampoo. shampoo on him, right? That's quite funny. Um, if you get mad you, and you stop when they're mad, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think. I think it's, it's, uh, it's not mean spirited, right? But if you're uh, if you're doing things which um, put other people in a position where they're not comfortable um, and might be offended for the sake of views, then I would say that there's much more value in instead of trying to get that chase that one viral video, right, which you think is going to propel you to fame. It, but newsflash it doesn't work that way. Um, there's more value in just making videos which which people genuinely want to watch. They come back for you, not for the drama of what occurs in the video. They come back for your characters and something that you're prepared to deliver over a long period of time. Yes, you, you, it's going to take you much longer to get to a point where you consider yourself successful. But the people that are there are then they're coming back for what you're providing, right? Yeah, and, and also I think um, because it's been done so much now the barrier to entry is so much higher. So like a, a, a little prank like that would have on YouTube 10 years ago would have performed, but now you've got to go to Afghanistan to get, to get the views. Yeah. Where does it stop? Right. I mean, yeah. What's the, like your, your pal's doing some videos a bit like this, not pranky videos, but like the sort of clouty chasing style in it. And the kind of Mr. Beastie, Mr. Sort of Beastie, style, it's like Mr. Beastie from on a budget. Um, yeah. Mr. Beast, but le- less spectacular. Yeah. That's the selling point. But that's the problem. You should put it? that on his tag. You should, you, should, <laughs> you should sell some merchandise that says Mr. Beast. That's small print, but, but less spectacular. <laughs> Nobody's giving away Ferraris. And that's the problem. Like when you've got no money at the beginning and you're just shooting videos in your bedroom, how much, extra, how extreme can it go? You when- know, what I, I wonder about that as well. Is I think like, do they, is that, do they, what's the motivation for, for creating the... So I know from personal experience, right, the motivation for me to start making videos... Uh, money! No, it was never oh, money. Right. Um, and that's certainly not the motivation for doing this podcast. <laughs> um, we're about, what, minus 35,000? We're in the, in the red, red. But anyway, um, what I was going to say is that I was... Mo- I started as a hobby, right? And then I... So I would share it with friends and families for a laugh. And then you get like a little small cult audience. So the motivation for me was I want to do something creative because I've always been like a creative kid. Never really had the outlet. I like making videos. I like trying to learn how to do it better than I currently do it. I like sharing it with people and the people that uh, are there to watch it, enjoy it, right? And that's that's gratifying, right? That's the, of course, like what, as you go down the, the line and it becomes a full-time job, then money becomes a factor, but it's not, it shouldn't be the defining factor, right? Yeah. Not to sound like a hippie, but the whole point is that you start this because you love doing it, right? And so you keep putting more in, you want to entertain your audience. And I think I always wonder now with kids starting out with, they think, oh, you know, I want to be a YouTuber, right? Um, why do they want to be that? You know, cause I never wanted to be a YouTuber, right? That was never like, I never, I didn't wake up one morning and think, oh, I want to be a YouTuber, right? So I, I think like, is the motivation just to be a well-known YouTube person? And so it, do they then think, right, okay, how's the quickest way I can, can get to this level by doing the most extreme things? So it's not, I think there are two two different types of YouTube person, right? It's yeah. different to somebody who has a passion for something um, and and d- does videos around that to somebody that just wants to do the most dramatic, most, you know, the hype, hypesters, I think. Do you think it's weird? Like, because obviously the, I guess most people that are going into it, the payoff is going to be uh, the clout 
We're going to clout. We should call this the clout episode. Did you see that? Uh, the tw- just to interject. Sorry, mate. Yeah, thanks but, for. Yeah, no, 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 but you do well remember. Like a passionate. No, no, you, I'll, you can continue. The, pa- you can gone. you can continue the passionate um, ramblings in a second. Right. But what I was going to say is, did you see the tweet? Because it's an interesting talking point about uh, on. Uh, Guy had done a TikTok video with 34 million views. I'm pretty sure I sent it in the oh, chat. Oh, yeah, you did, yeah. And he had done uh, a grand total of 230 quid from it. For 34, 34 million? 34 million views. So I don't know why I was going to get onto that. but um, Oh, because you, you were talking about clout. That immediately made me think TikTok. Yeah, so what I was going to say is like, so that as a uh, fair example, one of the payoffs or like one of the things that people think that they want is uh, notoriety, right? So they want to be recognised... They think that's what they want. Do you think? Is that? I think so. I think you're people, probably right. I think people, George, what do you reckon? You know, like people that start Some YouTube. Some people, they, I don't think they everybody. Want that, they want that celebrity. Yeah. They want to walk down the street and be recognised. And, like and Yeah, the people on X Factor that go on, they used to interview them and be like, what, what, what does this mean to you? Oh, it means everything. Like, what means everything? Oh, to be famous. Oh, not to record a, 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 an album and perform. Yeah, shows. yeah. You just want to be famous, right? But that's kind of like one of the worst parts of it. Yeah, like, who the fuck wants to be famous, man? Because <laughs> you know what it's like getting stopped. No, steady, steady. But yeah, no, I, I like getting, um, I like s- people that like the videos coming over and saying, I like the videos and having a little chat with them. Because to me, otherwise it's just numbers, right? So it's nice to be able to put a face to them. Yeah. But I would hate to be like uh, something legitimately, if it was somebody really you, famous. You can still go out and not get recognized and hounded. Like loads. I don't know, man. We've been yeah, no, you, you I, might get stopped a couple of times, but it's not like a, a mob forming around you. Yeah, I would, I, I'd that. hate to be like, who's somebody really famous? Tell me the most famous person on planet Earth right now. Ronaldo? Messi? Yeah, that must be rough. I mean, and, and I think people say, well, yeah, but sorry, because are getting paid loads of money. But it must be hard in a way to, to have, to not be able to go out and, uh, and so like, I, I get that, but I I, don't, I can't imagine why you would want to be famous. Famous fame like the byproduct of you providing something to humanity right so like einstein's famous because he gave us the theory of relativity right <laughs> bob dylan's famous because he gave us you know um the times they were cha- changing you know fucking uh i don't know uh our police famous because she gives to kill a mockingbird right that's that's why they're famous why would you want to be famous for fame's sake i don't get it because you don't there's nothing that you get for it other than like people say oh that's that guy oh that's that girl is that just me or no, I'm, I'm definitely with you. I think that's one of the negatives. I like, so I'm, my, my, my point was that a lot of people think that's what they want, but then I think when you get it, or if you start getting recognised, it's kind of weird. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, it, I don't know. I don't really know what to... It's almost like a side effect of having something successful. Yeah, because, like, you, you enjoy... You literally just said, like, oh, I enjoy making the videos. I enjoy putting something out there. Yeah, it's, it's nice to meet a couple of people, but you get, you get, you get hounded. So, like sometimes oh, I don't get hounded but I, I don't need that sometimes that, that like I feel a bit I feel I only feel odd because I think I wonder why people like want see if, if people ask me for a picture I'll, if I, I've got a bit of a people used to say at work when I had a real job that I've got resting bitch face <laughs> <laughs> I think which means you look grumpy all the time <laughs> I'm not right so like if, if you ever see me on the street I'll unless maybe I'm at a fucking funeral or something <laughs> I'll always make time for anyone that comes up and say I've seen loads of people uh, like over the years try to get pictures with other famous people who've been like no I'm too busy whatever like if that's me you have permission to punch me in the face right because like I'll always make time for people who watch my videos yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean that like, genuinely but I, to me I find it I think in a way a bit odd because I think like, why do you want to pitch with me I'm just an average fella you know yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I suppose that just comes down to like your personality I'd be like that with say if I'm walking down do you ever see that Roy Keane interview uh, where, with, where he's with Gary Neville walking through the woods and he's like if I saw Bob Dylan walking down the streets, I'd probably say, this is a second Bob Dylan reference in the last five minutes. <laughs> if I saw Bob Dylan walking through the woods, I'd probably say, you're all right, Bob, like your music and keep walking. And I think that's kind of like me. Like I would, I'm not really a big photo taker though. So maybe it's that, but I don't, I, I don't, it's nice when people come over and say, hello, I love your videos, but I, 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 I don't like the idea of, of fame. I find it quite awkward. I remember in the, when I was at the lounge at Heathrow, you ever been to that? It's like a, cafeteria almost like a big open area with these big long tables no. and some guy came over he said uh, I was fucked as well it's on the way home I'd had like no <laughs> sleep and I'm trying to wait to connect back up to Manchester he's like can I get a picture mate I'm like yeah of course mate I stink like my beard's all over the place but let's do it take a picture with him and naturally because it's so open I can just see everyone looking at me and I'm like oh, man, this is a bit weird like I can, you know I don't want to make eye contact with people so it's, it, I find it a bit 
strange, but not un- unpleasant. You know much. what I think is funny about like this like celebrity world is, um, it, I guess before you meet people of notoriety, you kind of, I just kind of assumed that <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid. I kind of assumed they can't gonna, sound more stupid than anything else that's gone before. <laughs> they're on this gonna podcast. live like in uh, in like their own little sort of. Uh, compounds you know like away from like general members of the public yeah. just to, and they'll go to like their different shopping centers you know like they'll go to like a different shops to get the food and and then i've been to so many people of like celebrities homes and i'm just like oh you just you just live in like a regular paul smith he lives in like a regular like he lives on an estate like mine and it blew my mind i'm like because more i think this is weird. like cause he's tra- like super famous what are doing UK, in the UK, at least, in Liverpool, he's fucking mega famous. Doing tours all up and out the UK. I just assumed he'd be like living in a, a fortress with like, you know, nine foot walls, just so that like people can't just come and chap on his door. And he doesn't. He lives in a regular like a regular place. I, yeah, but I, I think that comes down to like who you are. If you are just a regular person and you're not like. Mad, madly egotistical and invest in your own self importance. You probably just do want to be an average person who lives in. But that terrifies. Like, like for me, that like because if, if somebody clocks him going home, somebody clocks you going home. Aunt Middleton, I mean Aunt Middleton's house. I SAS. I thought this fucker. If somebody's gonna have a nine foot wall with like a, a watchtower and some dogs around the perimeter, Aunt Middleton. I went to his house and it's just like open drive, open driveway. And I'm like. Hey, is that it? Like I've proper assumed there'd be like helicopters circling. <laughs> I did. I wonder, I wonder though, like if part of that is if you're gonna try and home invade somebody that's been in the SAS, you're probably picking the no, right I'm house. I'm not saying home invade. I'm just saying like the ability to physically go. On. Did I tell that story on on here about oh, um, when that, when that person knocked on my door? Did I tell that story with the, the, the dad with his young kid. Not on the podcast. I didn't. Should I tell that story? Yeah, tell the story. Just because yeah. it's weird. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really matter. So I live in just a, a shitty state, don't I? Yeah, well, really? it's, yeah, it's a it's a nice shit estate. No, it's a shit estate. It's, it's estate. like a it's like a it's like sprinkling glitter on shit. <laughs> yeah. Can you like write write that down and send that to Mrs. Beard? Because like, we're trying to move out. <laughs> anyway, so I, I just live on a new build estate, right? And yeah. a lot of naturally neighbors kind of even if they don't watch your videos, they might see you on Facebook pop yeah. up here and there. So everyone knows what I do in my house, in, in my in my street, right? And naturally that that information does not stay contained. So they're gonna tell the na- friends and friends of friends maybe. Uh, and that's all right. I'm not. I'm, the only time it bothers me is if I'm away and I know uh, Mrs. Beard's at yeah. home, right? Um, but I remember this one time, like uh, I walk around. I'm sure I told us on the podcast before. I walk around my house like in pants a lot. Oh yeah, it's told, hot. yeah. Because I made the crazy frog reference. You might have told. Yeah. Yeah, tell us. Yeah, because I saying you, you look like a crazy frog with a little dick hanging out. Do you know? What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Carry on this time. <laughs> little pot belly. Um, <laughs> you know, but I, I, so, and something. Not, I thought it was like a delivery, and I'm not that bothered. <laughs> delivery man seen me like in my pants plenty of times. Um, so I, I come down and it's, uh, I didn't notice really till I got to the door and it's like a dad stood there with his, with his, uh, his daughter and, uh, they're like, oh, hi, uh, my daughter just loves your videos. I just wonder if you could get a picture. And I'm like, okay, this is a slight invasion of, I didn't say this something. I'm like, uh, yeah, just let me put some pants on. I can't really be taking pictures with a, an eight year old girl in just pants. So let me just get, put, you know, some clothes on. And I thought, you know, that is... It's, it's just scary, really. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, that they like watching the videos and I, I would never say no, but I thought that's a bit of a, an invasion of, of privacy and that they've come to your private house uh, to, 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 to do it. But I mean... Yeah, somebody knocking on your door, like that's absolutely crossing the line. Do you, there was a, a guy that, uh, a wrestler, I've forgotten his name now because I don't follow wrestling, but he said that loads of people, had, uh, some p- people got wind of where he lived um, and he said, I'm, I'm happy. He put a post saying, like, I'm happy to sign things at the airport. I'm happy to sign things at events. I'll stay around as long as I need to. But please don't come to my house because I'm not going to be coming down when the doorbell's ringing night and day. You know, he no. said there was like a mob of like 40 people outside his house. I thought that's, that is a bit too much. But um, it's like watching them Casey vlogs back in the day. You know, Casey Knight's that. And obviously, he, he always publicized exactly where his studio was. And then yeah. there were, it got to the point where. There'd be just a queue of people. Like, like there's one door entrance, but like yeah, one door with like on a lock, and there'd just be a queue of people waiting for him to potentially come to his studio or leave his studio. And he were like having to put on Instagram like stop fucking coming. T-. But do you not take personal offense at that? Though? But it would not be difficult for people to figure out where this is. We, there's no queue for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Where's our queue? <laughs> we're back. We're back. Right. I thought we were about to wrap this thing up like 25 minutes ago. We keep talking. I can't about, how long have we been going? 
I'm going for an hour and five. That were a chunky bit of Patreon action there. Chunky. <laughs> Doing a bit of the, the overrated, underrated. Um, so we're going to move on to the next part of this show, which is the breaky beard. <sighs> I thought you were going to say festival then. Thank God I've got a bit of reprieve from that for now. A breaking beard, yeah, go on. Hit us with it. Breaking beard. We, do we even know who, where, who's where? <laughs> you know I, mean? like, I feel like it's on screen now. You should have the forfeit like 15 years ago, Smith. It's on screen. It's on screen. Is right it? Right now. Yeah. Can you see it? So look. By the time this comes out, somebody might have lost by now. Who knows? <laughs> we'll have to just add many on. episodes. We'll have to add on to the thing. Yeah. Um, so who wants to go first? I've got two true or false questions each. I think I went first last time. I'll so go first then. Adam's texting his nan. Okay. So, cow sleep standing up. True or false? Cows, no, they don't. No, <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't, because you can go cow tipping back in the day. I never did it myself. Is that where you push a cow over when it's asleep? Or is that when I said cows sleep standing up? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure they're laid down when they're asleep and then you push them over. Lad, it's a true or false question. What's with the fucking theory? I'm trying to remember. Did you ever go cow t- I just remember what cow tipping. No. T- <laughs> did you ever go cow tipping? I remember a thing called cow tipping, but I just don't remember exactly what it was. There wasn't much going on back in the day. When we used How to, are you going to tip we- a cow when it's lying over? Like, Roll it over. I also feel like... Yeah, but how are you going to tip it over when it stood up? <laughs> I'm quite, you know what? I'm quite glad that n- not a single person watched that video of the chicken wings and came over to watch the podcast. Uh, Thank God. Cows sleep laid down. So you're saying false, saying false. No, it's true. Mm. Cows sleep standing up. What? Is that true? Yeah. I've, I'd, I mean, I feel like I've definitely seen a cow on the floor. So, so that's how we... cow tipping makes sense, because if they stood up and you tip them over. It sounds very cruel, that, though, cow tipping. I mean, I've, I've, I'm not, yeah, I've never, I've never done that. But I mean, I've, 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 what I'm thinking is I've seen a cow on the floor, so why would they not sleep? Cow the tipping is the uh, activity of sneaking up on any unsuspecting or sleeping upright cow and pushing it over for entertainment. <laughs> 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 That goes back to the Darwin Awards, man. Surely nobody's ever done that. I, th- it's, it's I mean, look thing. at the size of cows. I, do you think you could push a cow over? Even a sleeping cow? A sleeping cow that's like not... It's a, like, you'd probably like kick its legs out, wouldn't you? I, <laughs> kick its oh, legs God. out? What the <laughs> heck so is wrong cool. with you, man? I feel like... I'm not saying I've done it. I don't know how to cow tip. I'm I just... would be more confident of beating that bear in a fight oh, than, than tipping a cow over. I don't have the, you definitely don't have the strength. George for sure doesn't. Anyway, <laughs> what's what's my question? Right, next question. The letter H is between letters G and J on a keyboard. True or false? Say, say, that, say that again. <laughs> the letters, uh, the letter H is between the letters G and J on a keyboard. True G or and false? J. False. What sort of keyboard? A QWERTY keyboard, because that's what it is. Isn't oh, it? no, a no, no, keyboard. no, it's true. It is true. Yeah, I just did a little bit of phantom typing there. I, even phantom, t- I looked at it and still yeah, couldn't. Because, I, because I was, first thing you think is the alphabet, and then you're like, oh, no. That, that, no, I thought, it was gonna, I thought it would be too easy. I thought you were going to kind of give me a time constraint if it was just the alphabet. But, I mean, still, it would be reasonably easy. I mean, what's, what's a... Well done, Beard. So I'm winning. Well, yeah, Josh is definitely losing. <laughs> um, so the next one. A snail can sleep for up to three months. True or false? <laughs> Mrs. Bird must be. If that's true, Mrs. Bird's definitely like twenty percent <laughs> snail. <laughs> uh, false. It is false. They can actually sleep for up to three years. <laughs> <laughs> what? I imagine as well. Snails probably don't have a very long lifespan. Imagine if you waste like three years of sleep, and you, your lifespan is like nine years or something. When you wake up, you get stood on. <laughs> I was stood on a snail barefoot. It was like the most. Oh, hor- yeah, it crunches horror- between your toes. It was the most. Hor- but I was barefoot. It was like the most oh. horrifying. I was. I was walking outside in my garden. I don't know why. It's when I lived at my back. Of my parents' house actually. I went to the back garden, which I would never normally do, like barefoot. But I, may- I don't know why I did. Must have been some urgency to what I was doing. Stood on a snail. And- do you know anyone that's worse than that? So Danielle, uh, her mum <laughs> used to live in like a terrace house, and um, they had a cat flap on the back door. So they used to. So between the sort of kitchen area and the back garden and then the stairs to go up, there was another door. And on the night, the cat used to go out into the field and find mice and rats, bring them into the kitchen, eat the eat them. But then, you know, all the, the leave is the tail and the guts. 
and it used to put them if that were the door it used to put them there so you'd go in on a morning open the door <sighs> like barefoot to go make coffee and stand on a rat's gut so there's like a tail and rat's gut squ- <laughs> squelching between your toes what? we should just rebrand this the world's most disgusting <laughs> podcast it's all, there's always something gross oh. that happens in every every episode that imagine is, that that's, that's like a little kidney popping through your your toe with a tail shut on the fuck you could make some of your famous pate with it <laughs> right, go, who, who was next George you me so, did you get that one right uh, yeah you, I did yeah, get it right, did, yeah. yeah okay um, so this last one, your nose and sinuses produce almost one litre of mucus a day, in brackets, which you swallow. Oh, I can believe that. Yeah, true. It's true. Whoa. A litre a a, a of snap. It's mad, doesn't it? A litre. That is a lot as well. It's about your stomach capacity, actually. <laughs> so Adam's won this week. Well done, Adam. It doesn't feel like I've won, I'll be honest. Every time I sit in this shirt, it feels like I've lost a life. <laughs> it's, it's funny because he comes in and he's like, I look forward to this every week. I look forward to doing podcasts. Was, and then was, after the podcast, he's like, that was shite. And was, you know what, mate? I fucking agree with you today. I was, <laughs> I was bouncing this morning as well. Maybe that's the, the key is for me to be depressed coming in or be underslept or something like that. I, th- I think it's just sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. And this the idea of this podcast on paper seemed a good idea. Big Jimmy will, 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 will uh, give, do something special, mate. Yeah, <laughs> mate, You just tie it together in a nice snappy way. Cut in a bit of Joe Rogan's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like half an hour or so. Uh, the only one way to close this bitch out is uh, some festivals to cheer Adam up. Did you have to say the word bitch? Why <laughs> <laughs> you say the word bitch? I don't know. You fucking chauvinist bastard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got three festivals to a spoil today. My wife thinks I am a well-paid software developer working remotely. I actually run a lucrative niche porn tube site. <laughs> I pretend to have meetings by playing Udem- Udemy training, Udemy training videos that I pause and respond to. What's, what are they? The only th- I don't know, but the only thing I want to know there is what is the niche that he's making a living from, from, from it, you know? You would though, like, would you start an OnlyFans if it were just your feet? Or something, as a bloke. No. I, I would, imagine that. Taking pictures of your feet or something. <laughs> and making loads of money. No, because I think the, the concept of it would just be weird to me. Like, I'm, I, don't, I don't want people looking at people. Like, I mean, I'm all right for people to see me nude or whatever, but... Um, <laughs> so we could, so but I, I just think, like, why, why would somebody pay for... I don't know why people would pay for anything else on OnlyFans, to tell you the truth, but like... What I think would be like so disheartening, though, is if you were to post all that stuff on there... And then no one pays for it. I want to make a documentary. make no money. I want to make a documentary series about that. I'd love to make like a a, a five part documentary series about different things, but one of them to be like OnlyFans and speak to the pe- speak to people that are super successful and then speak to the people that have put pictures of their arsehole on the internet and nobody's bought it. I suppose I bet I would suggest that there are very few people that nobody has, you know, bought what they're putting out there. So I think even then, you, the outlay is almost nothing. The, the, you, you, you've got to have a number, aren't you? Like, what's the, what's the, at what point do I have I won this? Like, if I put a picture of my asshole on the internet and made 20 quid, I'd be like, I need, I need at least. But like, surely grand. the platform's oversaturated now. I don't know. Judge there's so not, many people doing it. I don't, you, although somebody that was, who, who is an OnlyFans model, I only know this because I saw it in the, they said that they would like my videos, right? And uh, I, I clicked on it. I can't remember. They said something. I thought, oh, let's have a look at this profile for whatever reason. Uh, but it turned out they were an OnlyFans model. I was instantly so kind of flapped a bit. I was like, oh, fucking hell. Um, <laughs> flapped a bit. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I suppose it's more prevalent than you might think. The thing about that is, I think, like, what's what's not going to affect being an OnlyFans model, you know? I'm not a prude, right? Do what you want. And if, if it gives you freedom to do what you like with your life and you're happy with it, cool. But imagine if you're like 18, 19, 20, 22. And like you've got man or woman, you've got like nudies, pictures of you or, you, you know, sexual acts happening that people can then discover at a later point. You're taking your kids to school in five yeah, years yeah. and those kids are watching you, I don't know. Um, Shove Lego in your butt. Yeah. <laughs> Put Lego in your butt. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, that's the thing that I would worry about with OnlyFans. But I think if I did OnlyFans right, it'd be those people like, you know, I told you asking me to eat baby food, yeah. like shirtless. I don't know why the shirtless thing, I, you know. I, I think you make a wedge doing that, you know. No, I, I don't think... When people saw me shirtless, I don't think they... I'm, I'm not quite the specimen I once was, but um, <laughs> I still just think that's that's weird. No, I wouldn't... I, I didn't, didn't matter if I was on, like, the... I'd rather be on the door, man. On rock and roll. Fair cop. Well, next one. I'm an older guy. I went on a chat site and pretended to be a 30-year-old married woman. 
I met a wealthy guy who keeps sending me cash when I chat to him. <laughs> I believe that. You know, I wouldn't believe it, but I've, I tell you, I keep, for whatever reason on Twitter, I keep seeing the uh, videos of this, this podcast called Whatever. It's like a dating podcast thing. All right. Yeah. He sent, sent links for it. It's just men making fun of women for some reason, but um, I keep seeing it, right? But I saw one clip the other day and it was, um, a, there was a woman on there saying that she, uh, some guy just kept sending her money and the host of the podcast was like, that's weird. And then all the, the, a lot of the women on the podcast said, no, that's like a thing, but it's called being a pay pig. Some, pe- some people are kind of in some way sexually gratified by sending a woman, even if they don't get anything in return um, or a relationship with them money. And I just thought that's kind of mad, but if it clearly exists because they were all fully aware of it. Imagine that, like, if you said that you, you need 300 quid for bail, I'd think twice before sending it to you. you Did know? somebody offer you 10 grand for your knickers? Yeah, but you never know how genuine that kind of thing is. It was just a, <laughs> it was just a comment on uh, or message on Instagram. I'm sure they wouldn't have paid it. Much less would I have even said, I mean, even if I thought it was helping them out and they really wanted them, I wouldn't I wouldn't be, like, taking that much from them. <laughs> Fucking hell, George. I'd be like, I'd be putting Calvin Klein's in Ziplocs. I'd be like, let's fire these out. <laughs> Ten grand to throw. People do that. Wasn't there somebody not long ago selling the bath water? Did you, I'm sure you told me that, George. Yeah. It'd be like an OnlyFans model or something like that. And she was selling a used bath water. The fuck? What's people wrong with people? It. Why would you buy that? I imagine how much money they're making there. Thousands and thousands she made off that anyway. Imagine. What, um, explain to me, right? <laughs> the mechanism by which that, like, why would you want that? Right, so you buy some weird, uh, you're into watches, George's into nice clothes or whatever, you're into cars. If you get that, I get it. Well, yeah. I get why you bought that, right? Why would you buy used bath water from somebody? I don't care if they're like... Just to sip it. <laughs> just, why would you buy it? What are you going to do? What do you do with it? Like, 100% they're know. drinking it. A drinking it, hundred percent. That makes it even worse. A hundred percent. It's like dirty bath water, though. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So you get you get that t- taste of I don't know. Like, People like to get pissed on and stuff, don't they? <laughs> that, I don't, like, it could it? be worse. Yeah. Yeah. What's like? I've seen that bath- on like podcast clips on uh, on Instagram. You've seen it. Well, I've listened to. Like, You've people- listened to it. It's even weirder. I've listened, listened to people explain <laughs> it. All oh, right. I don't know, man. But I, I don't know why you'd pay for someone's bath water. Jeez, man. <laughs> Any more? Final festival. Stop. One more. Stop, he's already dead. <laughs> it's all right, everyone's gone anyway. Um, I'm a wedding photographer. Since our son was born nine months ago, I have made up at least one fake wedding every week to get some time to myself to play football manager. My wife thinks business is booming. Are you sure that's not Mike? <laughs> <laughs> that's Mike, mate. Uh, well, I mean... I don't know what to say about that, I really. Believe, I believe it. One a week seems a bit excessive, though. I know. Shooting a wedding, it's exactly, like, that's like a day job, isn't it? It's like a full day and night. It is. Having done one wedding. You did really well with that, man. I enjoyed it, man. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I think I might try. I mean, the only thing about that is I would be really concerned about fucking it up for some bit. Like, I knew that person. They didn't think they would get anything. They thought I was going to turn up with a handy cam and just film <laughs> the vows. So they didn't think they were always going to be blown away by it, you know? Yeah. I can't remember if I mentioned to you at the time that you did that but there's like a video where someone's shooting someone's wedding and they're like, oh, I can't remember. They're like, they, they like crash into something and they just knock everything over and it, it just ruins everything. And they break the camera and just, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. I don't think <laughs> it could have gone worse. Mike's had some fails on the weddings before. Was, has he ever like fully fucked up where he's lost the wedding, like corrupted or something? No, he hadn't done that, but... Uh... <laughs> but he did a wedding. He did, his missus did a wedding. Mike, for context, if there are any new <laughs> listeners, um, was the guy that used to do the slightly less, in fact, considerably less attractive producer that used to do what George does yeah. now. Uh, R.I.P. Mike's hairline. It's worse than mine. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he was for filming a wedding with his missus and uh, as they were like doing the vows, his missus collapsed. Yeah, she Mike's fainted. fainted. Landed on the tripod, snapped the leg off the tripod, camera went flying <laughs> as the valves were happening. <laughs> so Mike's like at the other side going, oh, fuck, you know. Yeah, was yeah. He, was, what, so his, his wife was helping him film? Yeah, yeah, so she does uh, does it as well. So they've started their own wedding business. So anybody oh, fancies a, uh, a wedding video making, drop us a DM and I'll put you on to them guys. No one's fainted since, so I think they're doing pretty well. We, we can... Uh... No, it's not a good advert for it, is it? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anyone's... And Blue it, Blue it went to do, to do, to do a wedding and... Uh, so Josh is, anyway, he fucking, he went up to the bride. He's got his shot list from the company he's working for. And he goes up to the bride and he's like, oh, um, 
if you could just let me know when you're gonna have your makeup done, I need to get some shots of that. Fully ready. <laughs> Fully ready for a wedding. That's fucking Josh Blue all over that. I did. I remember when I was when I was doing that wedding. I was like, I need to get this. I need to get that. Um, but I found it really quite. For somebody who's pretty emotionally dead, I found it quite gratifying in a in a weird way. <laughs> I don't know why. But uh, so if it, let me know in the comments if you if you want me. I, no, if I think if if I advertise wedding videography people would just you're gonna be inundated just want, no no i don't think i'd be inundated but i think people would want me there and be like i don't really care about what you're filming yeah like scoff our scoff scoff wedding cake, cake please yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah I'd, I'd maybe in later life you know when i, I don't that's really a bit like uh like when a football is retired and they need to make more money after dinner speaking yeah this is gonna be adam butter's youtube career's over you'll see him at weddings <laughs> eating cheating cake there's something nice about it though because you, you're providing some there's a, a lot of stress right with the, the, the responsibility but you're providing on on that one day in their life usually, um, that they, you know that's, a, that's their memento of it. I think that's there's something gratifying about. That. I don't know what it is. No, yeah, yeah I, I get it. I personally wouldn't do it. It's a lot of shit. They're easy though. Fifty bang a fifty five millimeter <laughs> on there. Bit of promise. Shoot everything at hundred frames. <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit of blurry stuff in the background. Especially like shooting food. It's fucking ace. <laughs> you know. Well, so if anybody wants Beard Meets Food to uh, film the wedding, just drop them a DM on Instagram. Or if you just want to turn up and just be a guest. Somebody, um, <laughs> so, did I tell you somebody asked for an invitation to my wedding with Mrs. Beard? No. Recently. Just emailed me as well. Not not like a, the email. So, hi, hi, Adam. Just wondering when you're getting married to Mrs. Beard and can I be invited? Did I tell you that I got invited to uh, Rate My Takeaway's wedding? No. Yeah, I got invited to Rate My Takeaway. <laughs> you going? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the dates are. I feel kind of obliged <laughs> <Well, right> now. <laughs> well, it's good. You're going to say yeah. And then like a day before he's going to say, Josh, make sure you, you bring your camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shoot, fuck it will, yeah. I know it will, Daddy will, won't he? Yeah, for sure. I'm not even joking. Come on, guys. The channel. Do, do us a favor. Will you film us uh, behind the scenes vlog for his wedding? <laughs> fuck off, Danny. I thought we were for some scram to chill out. Like. It's for charity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, that's that then for this week, boys. Uh, absolute tram smash of an episode, if I do say so myself. It's not often whilst filming, I think this has gone really badly, but this week is one of those. It was because you, you, it was your idea. A lot of people I saw liked the, me hosting, so maybe next time. Well, I'll well volunteered. We're going to record tomorrow, and if you can uh, get the oh, show together. Fuck, I um, we'll see you there. Oh, oh, oh.